So things have heated up while you've been away, or while I've been away, rather. And I am certainly concerned that Taylor is part of this challenge. And I was thinking to myself quietly that if she does get involved, she is, unlike, uh, like Tristan says, going to be the likely winner. Time will tell. We've been slinking around this beautiful little road that gets us in and amongst some of the riparian trees along the Mara River, which is home to these mammoth crocodiles. And they're just relaxing. This one's cooling off. Hence, it's having its mouth open. That's how they thermoregulate. And what I cannot wait is for us to get a little bit more involved in the crossing action. It's just a matter of time before the masses of wildebeest make their way further north into the Triangle and into the Masai Mara Reserve. But for now, they're kind of ebbing and flowing around the Tanzanian border. So these crocodiles are going to have to be patient. Beautiful. Because the, the vegetation is so thick along this river, it can be difficult to meander your way through it. And there's not too many roads that bring you right along the edge. So this is quite a unique spot in this section of the reserve. And I've only been here once before, but fell in love with it. And it is the most, I feel, likely spot to find a leopard. Lots of trees for them to hoist their kills up into. With such a high hyena density in this area, I'm sure all of the leopards have learned quite quickly to hoist their kills into trees, otherwise they will almost certainly lose them. It's kind of not so the case in the Sabi Sands. You find some leopards do, some don't. Some do some of the times and not others. So it's something all interesting that I've always wondered about, how leopards will sometimes hoist a kill and sometimes worst won't. Um, And I'm told a lot of you are in awe as to the size of these massive crocodiles. And so you should be because they are monstrous. And in terms of all of my travels through Africa, this has been one of the best places to view crocodiles, or at least huge crocodiles. Oh, there's some very pretty butterflies, one that I've actually never seen before fluttering off down there. It's always a bit of a challenge. This is like a cameraman's worst nightmare. Although they seem to be being wh quite well behaved. Now, the one that's caught my attention is the one that he's zooming into now. Look at how... Oh! That's what I mean about the cameraman's worst nightmare. But that one over there, it seems to be some kind of a swallowtail or a sword tail. I'm not sure which one. But a lot of beautiful butterflies in this area. And new ones that we will, as the days unfold, we will be able to get you some better views of them and also know exactly who they are. There we go. Well, then there you can see the sword tails or swallow tails that give it its name. And a pretty little purple flower from which it is gathering pollen. Now, Nancy, you're interested to know what the crocodiles we've just been looking at will eat in between the migration period. Oh, look at that one. That's absolutely, well, all of them are actually awesome. So a few different types of sword tails, it appears to be. But if any of you know the exact species we're looking at, please do share with us. That would be wonderful to know. Sorry, Nancy, you're interested to know what the crocodiles will eat when they don't have all the wildebeest crashing through this river, providing them with easy meals. And it would be a very interesting study to do because I'm fairly certain that during the, the months of the migration, they get to gorge themselves to a point that they probably won't need to feed until the migration arrives the following year. Of course, that doesn't go, mean to say that they're not going to take any other easy meals, other animals coming down to drink. That does happen throughout the year. Even yesterday, we were watching some zebra just coming down to the river to drink. They weren't planning on crossing. So I think animals coming to drink, as well as fish and terrapins, will provide a large portion of their diet. Um, crocodiles are known to lie in rapids with their mouth open, waiting for fish to, to come into their mouth, and then they just slam those jaws shut. So um, 
again, like I said, it would be an interesting study. An animal like a crocodile is quite a difficult one to research. Not as easy as, as a leopard, for example, like Shongila or Mvula, who you get to know, you get to know their territory. And you can kind of get to know them on a quite personal basis, and we're so fortunate with that. But with an animal like a crocodile, it's going to be tricky to work that out, unless, I guess, you, you put a radio transmitter on it to know where it was. But then to be with it all the time and know what it eats all the time with such a slime, mysterious beast would be tricky, certainly in the wild. But the main thing to take from that, Nancy, I guess, is that they can survive for months without food. They can go into states of estivation, where they'll go into, even if this river was to dry up, they would be able to find a small little cave and basically just switch themselves off until the river starts Sorry, in the quest to find a leopard, I'm taking you into some low signal areas. I'm having to gamble here to compete with the incredible leopard viewing in the Sabi Sands. And now it's, it's two against one. It's Taylor and Tristan against me. And so, and now it sounds like Tristan's hot on the trail of a leopard and he wants you to jump on board with him.